Today we are exploring one of the most important plants to the nature, history, and culture of the southeastern United States. River cane, as you can see on the bank behind me, scientifically known as a running area. Travel with us down the highways, main streets, back roads, and trails to discover nature, history, and cultures that are unknown to many people. We will attend events and explore locations on a quest to help us better understand the Earth's natural collection of plants, animals, landscapes, and other features. Investigate the history of our Earth's geography and human activities. Look at the diversity of different cultures, including their knowledge, beliefs, arts, customs, music, and other social habits. So join us on these nature walks and adventures to learn more about our world. There are three types of river cane. A Rundinaria gigantea that can reach 20 feet tall. The smaller a Rundinaria tecta and the Rundi area Appalachiana, which is only found in the Appalachian Mountains. These are the only members of the bamboo family native to North America and found exclusively in the southeastern United States. The easiest way to tell native river cane, shown in the bottom of this picture, from the bamboo shown in the top, is that river cane's branches follow up the shaft before growing outward. Bamboo's branches grow straight out from the plant. Also notice that river cane is completely round and the bamboo has a flat surface on one side. River cane was used extensively by the early Native Americans. It's been said that cane was the Native people's plastic because so many things they used were made from it. And the cane patch was their department store. The Native Americans of the southeastern United States used river cane in the making of their shelters, fires, and musical instruments. Cane material was used in the weaving of baskets, clothing, and sleeping mats. For weapons and hunting tools, cane was used in making addle addle darts, arrows for bows, and blow guns. But the Native Americans had a much larger impact on the nature, history, and culture of river cane, one that goes beyond its use for materials and tools. The vast areas of cane that were found by the first European settlers did not happen by chance. By 1000 AD, the native people had already began an extensive agricultural process where they cleared the bottomlands to grow corn, squash, beans, and other agricultural products. There was an estimated 1.7 million people in the region at that time, and the agricultural process helped support those people. If the Native Americans cleared so much land for agricultural purposes, why then did the first Europeans find large cane breaks, some reported to be miles across, when they first entered the southeast in the 18th century. In the 16th century, the Native Americans were exposed for the first time to old world diseases from Europe. With a 90 to 95% decline in their population, the cane fields that they attended were abandoned and became feral, which led to the massive cane fields that were found when the first European settlers arrived in the southeast. To understand how the cane took over the large areas that many early settlers observed, the reproduction process must be addressed. A rundown area native to the United States reproduces in two ways. One of the ways is by flowering. However, flowering has been found to be unpredictable and on an irregular cycle. The flowering produces seeds that fall to the ground. Studies have shown that only about 1 in 10,000 florets produce viable seeds. With flowering periods ranging from between 3 to over 50 years, followed by a die-off of the entire stand after flowering. This makes the possibility of cane resetting itself very unpredictable and very unreliable. Cane also grows underground. During the first year that the cane is growing from a seed, it also produces one or more subterranean clumps. The clumps are chain roots that are called rhizomes, which are just under the surface of the ground. Additional canes are produced from buds formed on these rhizomes. These in turn produce additional rhizomes, which produce additional canes, which produce additional rhizomes, and so on until just a few canes become a break, 
Sometimes a whole cane break will form all from a single individual seed. A patch of cane will continue to reproduce by this method until no more room remains for new canes to grow. It is now estimated that there is 98% less a running area gigantia cane than there were when the first European settlers entered the southeast in the 18th century. Over the past 250 years or so, cane has disappeared from the landscape of the entire southeastern United States. There are both natural and anthropogenic causes in the decline of cane. Natural disturbances that lead to the decline in cane breaks include river flooding that scoured the topsoil and the cane from the bottomlands. Fire is started by lightning which is particularly devastating to cane breaks after it has flowered, seeded, and died, but before a new stand of cane could be established. The decline in Paleo-Indian agriculture was responsible for the massive growth of cane in the rich bottomlands of the southeast. Agriculture was also responsible for the reduction of cane. Overgrazing by domestic livestock and agricultural land clearing was responsible for most of the cane disappearing from the southeastern United States. Also, in recent years, flood control projects have played a role in the demise of river cane by damping the natural flooding cycles. This reduced the important nutrients that flooding had brought to the cane breaks in the river bottoms. In recent years, there's been a drive to bring river cane back to some areas. This is being done for a number of reasons. Native Americans still use it for traditional items, and craftsmen use it for building materials. It's also used to increase habitat for wildlife that uses cane breaks. Also, it helps to maintain and reestablish riparian ecosystems by reducing erosion and effectively filtering agricultural runoff. Enjoy these images of river cane. Becoming more familiar with how to recognize river cane will make it easier to find in nature. In the video description below, there is information about the locations where the videos and photographs were made. There is also helpful links and further information about river cane.